Hello, hello, my name is Dennis Jensen, and this is going to be a new tutorial presented by polyface.com about how to rig a mechanical creature. Um, and I'm going to overview how I did it. I'm going to quickly describe the method that I used to do it. And uh, hopefully you will get some new information that you probably didn't have before. So I think it's going to be great. Let's uh, jump right into it and have fun. So this is the rig that I made uh, a couple of months ago, I think it was. And uh, there was a lot of challenges with this rig. The first very important thing when you are rigging is to um, Normally I, I do this, you can do it if you want to, but just write a list on the complicated stuff you're going to do and imagine how you're going to do it. Um, you need to have some kind of strategy on how you are going to do it. The main thing for me was the pistons. I wasn't sure how to do them. And the stomach because the tubes are going inside of the stomach. So that was um, quite interesting to do. Also another thing that I noticed while rigging was the back legs, because the back legs are on the same plane all the time, so they can't really rotate in, in, in all the axes, and normally when you make IK solver, you would uh, probably, it will probably rotate in all the axes like they do on the legs and stuff, but you, in this case, I only wanted it on one axis. So the main, the first issue I dealt with was the, um, was the pistons. In this example I look at how to make a piston rig. And to do that you need one locator to uh, define the position and you need another locator to aim towards the other end of the piston. So I have one locator or actually four locators. One locator is giving the position, I can move that around. The locator just below is getting the translate from the locator above and uh, the rotation is uh, aiming towards the other locators. This means that I can move it around and it will still aim, aim towards the other locators down below. To show with some geometry you can see here how it works. And it works like a charm. After that I decided to take a look at the, the back legs because they were a bit more complicated and as you can see it works like a charm. I can go to side to side and uh, it only rotates around here so it doesn't flip the joints in any way. It was quite uh, difficult to do but what I did was I used a locator in, uh, in, the, in here in the joint. And then I had one locator up here as well. This locator was aimed towards this controller, but it had an up vector aiming towards the, this locator. So that meant whenever I was trying to move this, it would point towards the controller, but it will still have an up vector pointing towards actually this controller. So this is just the addition controller, you should, I shouldn't really use that, that, but it was just to get a bit more control, you can see it wouldn't really move that way in reality. So one of the other things was the stomach, because the stomach had to be very uh, dynamic, so I had to come up with some, some different stuff, and the first thing was to make these tubes and find a way to control them. And you can see it works all right now. The way I did it was I made some joints, actually as many joints as there are controllers. So you can see one, two, three, four joints. But I also added one in the end, uh, in the end of the tubes. So I actually had six for this tube. And then these joints deforms a, a nerve plane, and this nerve plane has follicles on it and the follicles have joints on top of them and then the joints are controlling 
uh, or deforming, sorry, the mesh. So it, the end result is this. It's also called a ribbon, ribbon rig. And you, if you think this is interesting, you should probably check it out. It's way too uh, technical to explain in a short video. Um, I also, the problem was that the tubes had to follow. So I made this squash and stretch on the stomach. And how I got this to work was I made a rivet. It's a locator that stays on the surface. So I made a rivet here in the hole and also on the other tube. So these rivets would follow and would also not, it would, it would just follow the surface. So it works really nice, I think. Normally when I do facial animation or facial wigs, I like to uh, make joints. And I did that as well on this wig, so you can pull up, pull up the, the jar and you can uh, rotate it. That was just joints, and these are joints as well that you can manipulate. There wasn't really that much facial animation on this one, so I kept it really simple. The, um, <coughs> the general thing about using joints compared to blend shapes is that when you're using joints, it's much faster and you get a lot of control. You can see I can I can deform the mesh out here and then afterwards I can take the controller and tweak the face if I want to do that. If I was using blend shapes, I couldn't really tweak it afterwards. And blend shapes takes a long time to adjust and deform, right? So it's, it really takes a long time. But the good thing about blend shapes is that you, could, you can really get the, the wrinkles in the face. You can really decide how the wrinkles should de deform. So I don't think any of the two things are better than the other one. But if you combine them, I think you get a really strong wig. So I haven't done this that on this week, but uh, I'll definitely try that at some point. And you can see also the eyes can do some funny stuff. And yeah, that uh, that's basically it. I also did uh, some additional controllers for the motor because we wanted some uh, small animation on that. So if you pull this thing, you can see that it actually rotates. And this was just by, done by a set driven key. And then I add, I made it a loop in uh, into infinity. You can do that in the graph editor. So that was really easy, thank God. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's basically how I did the rig. If you have a really complicated rig, you should probably make, uh, you can see out here I have different settings and I can hide the small detail. I could also hide the medium detail. But if I just had the small detail, the wig is much more fluent. <laughs> it should be at least. So when the animator is going to animate, they can easily deform the wig in any way they want. And you can see I could also rotate it. So this was quite a big thing for me to wig. Um, yeah, I think that was about it that I used. The only thing I, did, I forgot to mention was the tubes down here. But they're really easy, they're just uh, tubes that deforms the surface a little bit. So the animator can model them, or not model them, animate them as well. When they're moving around. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for listening. This um, this was a quick tutorial just to give an introduction to how I would uh, rig a mechanical creature. Um, if you liked the tutorial, please check the site out. Currently, I'm holding a competition where you can win some pretty cool art books. The only thing you need to do is to sculpt a head, and it needs to be within the theme fantasy creature. So it should be, it's a pretty wide theme and I think people can find some good stuff to do. But it's some pretty cool books. You should check it out and maybe you'll win, maybe you won't, but at least you'll learn something by anticipating. 
So thanks a lot for listening and have a really good day. Bye.